SiliconANGLE TV and Wikibon.org present a Focus Spotlight. Live from Las Vegas at VMworld 2011, host John Furrier and Dave Valente illuminating cloud realities with support from NetApp. Innovative clouds are built on NetApp. Hi, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org on SiliconANGLE TV's live continuous coverage from VMworld 2011 in Las Vegas. Here talking on the uh, spotlight for cloud realities. And joining me is a panel of uh, cloud experts. Oh. Not self-proclaimed cloud experts, no. but, but well understood cloud experts. So uh, let me introduce uh, Jay Fry from CA, Brian Basley from Cisco, and Matthew Lodge from VMware. Guys, thanks for coming on theCUBE. No thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. So, uh, Brian's been on theCUBE before, so Matthew and Jay, who, who haven't been in theCUBE before, no. this is where we like to bring in the smart nodes and unleash uh, you know, information on the community and, and, and share that. So we're sharing from your smart nodes what's going on out there. So, um, Matthew, I think I'm going to start with you. Okay. So uh, we're talking about cloud realities, and I think you know, hopefully we're really past some of those early definitional phases of cloud. Uh, I at least felt from last year to this year uh, that the discussion was much more mature. I, I love the focus on the keynotes, talking about users, their applications, uh, and, and you know, not so much just you know, blah 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 cloud. Um, so uh, you've been doing some sessions here. I was wondering, you know, what you can share with the community about the reality of clouds and, and what you're seeing. Yeah, I, th I think that's absolutely true. Um, I mean, one of the things that I did as a panel earlier on with some uh, customers who've been uh, moving to hybrid cloud. Um, and a vast range of different business cases. Uh, and so what was interesting about this was really sheer variety. I, mean, I had a guy, uh, Chris Spence, uh, who runs IT for the National Democratic Institute out of Washington, DC. So if your country has been run by a dictator for the last 30 years, Chris and his guys are going to help you become democratic in 90 days or less. I mean, essentially what these guys are doing is you go into a country that's never had political parties before, and they do all of the systems that do things like voter registration, right? or you join a political party and you want to become a member of a party, and things like monitoring elections for fairness, and all of that stuff runs in the cloud. It's a fascinating example um, of the cloud use case. It actually runs better there because they, you know, they ran election monitoring in Burma and they got all kinds of denial of service attacks. So actually running it in the cloud is a better application for them than it is trying to run it anywhere else, and especially trying to run it inside their own four walls. All right. So, hey Brian, if I can slide down to you. So, um, well, I heard Paul Moritz say that infrastructure is boring, but when we look at cloud, you know, infrastructure obviously still matters, and there are things that have to change a little bit in infrastructure to be able to build cloud. So, maybe you can uh, give us a little bit of your Cisco perspective uh, on uh, infrastructure for, for clouds and what, what that means today. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, Paul's been saying infrastructure's boring for a bunch of years. That's not necessarily new. I, I think, you know, for him, it's, it's a much easier way to say, look, the applications have to scale, the applications are going to be written differently, so you can only wrap your head around so many things. Um, but I think the reality is, and, and you know, we saw the announcement, the joint announcement this week from Cisco and VMware and a number of others around how do you take the infrastructure and make it be able to scale and deal with movable applications. So uh, you know, from our perspective, uh, we understand you know, Paul saying that, we understand that it helps him you know, wrap the idea that you're going to build applications differently. At the end of the day, the network, um, A, has to be there, B, has to be really fast, but, but for us in particular, what we've been working on has been, what do you start doing when the applications are really different? They don't stand still, they move around, um, you've got to move them in you know, sub-microseconds. That's the things that we've been working on, and I think while it's, it's plumbing, I mean, we've always said, what we do is plumbing. Um, you know, it's 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 a different kind of plumbing. Yeah, without good, good plumbing, the house really stinks. That's, yeah, that's so, right. So, <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, you know, no discussion of cloud uh, can, can be complete without a discussion of kind of management and orchestration. So, uh, you know. Jay, uh, I think we've been saying for years, uh, you know, in, in general, when I look at most of the vendors out there, you know, management sucks. So, um, you know, <laughs> you're probably, uh, you know, from a CA perspective, uh, where is the industry and how are we with uh, management for a cloud environment? So I think the, uh, the interesting thing about cloud is it really brings management security right to the forefront. I mean, it, it is the thing that gets that to be a really uh, central piece of what people have to think about and a lot of the disciplines that people have been trying to get right for a, a number of years, uh, now they really got to get them right. And I think 
Um, there's definitely been a lot of maturity over the past year and a half. That things have really gotten um, taking a, a, a couple big steps forward. Um, you know, we, we started about 18 months ago acquiring a bunch of companies and doing a lot of internal development, um, focusing on the, the idea that you're going to have what you already run and you're going to have some cloud stuff and you're going to have a, a mix in there. And that's really um, the sort of thought process that we see. And I think a lot of customers are are, are looking at that because it gives them a way of, of saying, I'm not tossing everything away. That's, that's not going to happen. Um, but I need to find a, a really good way to, to, to be able to look at this all together. And, and um, I think there's there's been um, a lot of successes over the past year. I mean, people basically have really gotten to a point where um, they've done the kicking of the tires. I think last last year was a, a little bit about that, and, and folks are actually starting to turn to the point where they can actually get real stuff done. Okay, uh, excellent. So, uh, Matthew, maybe if I can come down to you. Uh, I hear you know a big ecosystem partner message always at VMworld. I, I you know always think I think I heard Carl say that it's over a forty-five, almost fifty billion dollar ecosystem. Um, so, um, how has how is the ecosystem helping to build uh, that cloud environment? I think you know we we got a nice uh, selection of uh, some of your partners up here. So, um, maybe we can give a little color on that. Yeah. So I think the important thing is that for most organizations. This is going to be evolution, not revolution, right? And so the partnership ecosystem is incredibly important piece of that. Um, you know, we've seen the examples of the extreme brand new cloudy applications, the sort of you know, new paradigms of, of building applications. But reality for $50 billion worth of investment uh, in the partner community is that, you know, I can't just throw that away, right? I've got to be able to take this and move it forward. Uh, and so the ecosystem is incredibly important for that because otherwise, you know, it, it's not going to be the case that everybody rewrites their applications. They're going to have to take the application, evolve it, uh, move it into the cloud to get the benefit of that business agility that they're all looking for. I mean, I just a couple of statistics. You know, we have 5,600 service provider partners now as part of that ecosystem. You know, a lot of them, are, you know, running on Cisco gear. Some of them are using, you know, CA management. Um, that ecosystem has grown in terms of their bookings for their service 174% in the last 12 months, right? That's in phenomenal growth. Last year it was 145, so it's accelerating. So that sort of gives you a sense of the velocity and the, and the change, uh, particularly towards uh, the, you know, the hybrid cloud, the combination of what you do yourself inside your own four walls plus the service providers. Okay. Uh, so Brian, so you know, service providers, hot topic. Um, maybe you'd like to, you know, what, what have you been seeing to kind of change and uh, where are we with the service providers and their deployment of uh, cloud environments? You know, I, I think the biggest challenge that, uh, when you look at service providers, is trying to lump them all into one group, right? It's sort of like looking at all the countries in Europe and saying it's Europe and they're all the same, right? So, uh, you know, there's obviously a number of, of service providers that are you know, you know, chasing Amazon, if you will, right? Trying to chase the super low cost, uh, hopefully very simple type of cloud, although, you know, Amazon's obviously evolved. Uh, I think we see more and more um, service providers that are trying to, you know, do what they do, which is differentiate, but they're, they're doing things like Matthew talked about, right? You've got guys who are saying there are unique situations in emerging countries, and, and, and maybe it's, you know, voting, maybe it's, uh, you know, trying to help uh, roll out a couple of, of mobile applications for you know a certain uh, type of business uh, that people are getting into. So we're seeing more and more of the service providers who are saying, um, I don't want to go chasing the, the bottom. I don't want to sort of chase to the bottom, right? Um, I want to uh, partner with some of the technology companies because you guys have customer bases that are commercial, that are government, that are others. Uh, can you help me you know reach those people? Um, and, and I think what they're doing is they're saying, look, how do I how do I, their biggest challenge is how do I create something that, that people trust, right? Because every time there's a cloud outage, whoever, it doesn't matter who it is, that cloud brand gets tagged to some of them, right? So it's an opportunity for them to say, uh, you know, we do things different than the cloud, whatever went down, but it's also a chance for them to go, I can go have a different conversation with my customer because they now have a, a different perceived risk. They have a different thing that they think is challenging. Um, and that part has been really interesting. We've seen the conversation move from purely, I want to build cloud or infrastructure as a service to, I know how to do that, how do I now go after certain markets that I can be really successful at? 
Great. So, uh, Jay, operationally, uh, you know, CIOs have uh, a lot of challenges with, you know, huge growth rates uh, and, uh, you know, flat head counts, uh, uh, you know, typically. And when I look at kind of my in-house environment and expanding to a hybrid cloud, uh, you know, how are customers really managing that environment and uh, helping th their workforce, uh, you know, the IT professionals uh, take, a, you know, uh, manage those uh, environments today? Well, I think part of it is they do uh, start to rely a lot on the service providers that, that these guys are both talking about, and I think that set of skills is a is a is a different set of skills, and it's it's much more about vendor management than it is I've got to go connect this wire to that wire, um, and so the IT guys themselves are having to make a big shift from uh, I'm the guy doing the the pieces to the, I'm the guy orchestrating the pieces, and I think uh, it. It's a hard one, but it's an important one to, to, to do because it, it's going to be the only way they're going to be able to get ahead of this. And I think what, what people are finding is that if, if you don't get ahead of it, then, then your users are going to take the opportunity to go do what they want to do anyway. And that's, you definitely don't want that, right? Okay, so uh, rapid fire, final question. Uh, Matthew, I'll start with you down at the end. Uh, customers that are looking at cloud today, what's one thing that they should check out that they might not be aware of? I think you should check out one thing. Figure out how much it's actually going to cost to get your application into the cloud. So take a look, make sure you, you are getting what you think you get when you get into the cloud. What are the costs, the switching costs of doing that? Take a close look. All I think right. that's really important to do. Brian, uh, white space in the marketplace? Um, white space <laughs> in the marketplace. I think, I think there's a huge opportunity for um, companies that can either operationally help people figure out how to start to blur, blur or, or bring together the operational teams that have gotten, you know, been siloed, um, or come in and, and, and help people do that. The, the biggest thing that we see is people who go, I, I see where I'd like to get, I don't exactly know how to get there, and some of it's technology and some of it's sort of operational. So there's a, there's a huge opportunity for people to come in and help do that. All right, Jay, I'm going to give you the final word. Know what you want out of your business and apply that using cloud. It, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. Well, gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for joining your perspectives. Uh, all three of you, I know, are uh, prolific out there in the, uh, you know, the webosphere, blogosphere, and everything. So uh, I recommend that people uh, ch check out uh, Matthew Lodge from VMware, Brian Gracely from Cisco, and Jay Fry from CA. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here in the Cube. Thanks, Stu. Thanks a lot, Thanks, Stu.